Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Michael Bublé. <laughs> Why not take all of me? I can't you see? I'm no good without you. Take these lips. I want to lose them. I take my arms. I'll never use them. Your goodbye. They left me with eyes that cry uh, How can I get along without you? You took the paw That once was my heart So why not I take all of me? Let's go, boys, come on now gives you the best seat in the house at a legendary music venue. From the historic Masonic Temple in downtown Toronto, Bravo presents At the Concert Hall, featuring master showman Michael Bublé. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you very much. My name is Michael Bublé. Welcome to the Concert Hall. Uh, tonight, I am my own host. I told you right before the show, I wanted this to be intimate. For those of you at home, I just wanted this to be me and you. <laughs> really, so tonight I wanted to do songs and uh, we're going to take questions from the audience and uh, basically we're just going to have a really nice party and I want you guys to just chill with me and sing if you want, dance if you want, be with me and have a good time. Okay, so what I've done is I've, I've when the audience came in tonight, you guys, you guys all filled out kind of questions and stuff and they took a bunch. I haven't seen them, but I'm going to answer them in no particular order. God help me. I was hoping that I would read them and they'd say like, why are you so sexy? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> this is from Jesse. What a name. Jesse Cinnamon. <laughs> Jesse. I wish to have Jesse's. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jesse writes to me, Michael, when did you, when did you know you wanted to be a singer? Want the truth answer or the, 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 Okay, the true answer is I was about 12 years old, and this is true, you can look at any interview, I wanted to get laid so bad. <laughs> Jesse, and, and I swear to God, I swear to God, if a president of a country or a CEO of a company answered honestly, I would guess that his answer would be similar to mine. <laughs> I love music, for, I mean, obviously I love music and all that stuff, but I wanted to become all powerful and popular so I would be attractive to the opposite sex. Thank you, Jesse. 
And here's the answer they're going to use. Why, Jesse, I fell in love with the standards at a young age, and I felt blessed to be able to carry on the legacy of my idols. Okay. How many questions do I get to answer, by the way? As many as I want. This is great. Okay. Let me see. What do we got here? Uh, this is from Lana. Lana, where's Lana? Hi, Lana. How are you, honey? Do you want to... You... Oh, this is easy. Yeah. Yeah, you read this to me. Okay, you use the mic. Go. Okay. If you could have one superpower, what would it be and why? <clears throat> I have said this before many times, Lana. I've said it in print, too. I would like to be able to see through clothing. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, and I actually, I said this in Blender magazine. They said, what superpower would you like? And I said, to be able to see through clothes. And the woman said, well, what happens w if you walked up to your mom? And I said, well, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> okay. A couple more? One more, okay. Uh, what do you got here? Well, hello. This is from the, uh, the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs, Brian Burke. <laughs> this is so awesome. Um, could you talk to the Vancouver Canucks into trading us a seventh round draft pick for Luke Shen? I made that, I made that one up, you know. <laughs> but now, you know what, I'm going to give you a hug, Bert. For those of you who don't know, uh, Je uh, Jennifer is Brian's lovely wife, and she was the first person to ever put me on television when I was a kid. Uh, truthfully, I love you for it. And you know that... <laughs> In the interview, do you know what I said? You said, like, what's your goal? And I said, oh, I want to be, you know, famous and stuff. And I said, oh, I've sold out Madison Square Garden in the shower a whole bunch of times. And my dad saw it, and he was, just said to me, because I just played Madison Square Garden, he went, oh, my God, you said it. And you did it. <laughs> and it's all because of you. All right. Now, I'm going to sing another tune. Uh, this one is, I like this song a lot. It's called How Sweet It Is To Be Loved By You. Hope you dig it. Let's go, boy. Need the shelter of someone's arm. And there are you. Someone who understand my ups and downs, and there you were. Bless me, love and devotion. I'm touching my emotion. I want to stop and thank you, baby. I just want to stop and thank you, baby. Oh, yeah. I close my eyes at night Wondering what were I without you in my life Now everything I did was such a ball Now everywhere I went, you know I've been there before But you find the funny all of my days To myself, for me there is you and nobody else. I want to stop and thank you, baby. I just want to stop. Thank you, baby. 
Thank you so much. You rocked it there. You were so good when you did that. Okay, but seriously, let's get serious. <laughs> I, uh, I with my friend Alan Chang here, and a wonderful, wonderful writer named Amy uh, Foster. I love you so much, Alan and Amy. You're supposed to clap there. We'll add that in. Uh, anyway, we wrote a song called Everything uh, on the last record. Okay. But what people don't know is that I was 16 years old when I wrote the song. Um, and uh, it didn't go the same way. Uh, <laughs> this is so terribly cheesy, but it's true. This is how everything uh, started off in, in my head at 16. And when you sleep tonight and while you're dreaming, I will know that dreams come true. And when you sleep, and when I dream, I'll dream of you. <laughs> that is the frickin' truth. That is the truth. That's the song. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, Canada. I can't do this by myself. I could, but it would be karaoke, and I'd be hammered right now. So I do it with a band, a beautiful band, and if it's okay with you, I'd like very much to introduce you to the great ones, but I can't do it. Give me some sexy music, boys. Oh my God. Ladies and gentlemen, on the trumpet, Albuquerque, New Mexico's Justin Ray. Seattle, Washington, Mr. Drew Money Smith. From Roanoke, Virginia, Mr. Brian Lynch on a trumpet. From Boston, Massachusetts, Mr. Nick Vinos on the trombone. From Toronto, Ontario, Mr. Josh Brown on trombone. Mr. Mark Small on the saxophone. Also from Albuquerque, New Mexico, Mr. Rob Wilkerson on the alto sax. Yeah. From Asheville, come see, baby. Mr. Jacob Rodriguez on the sax. Making you feel so good. Bob Perkins on the drums. On the bass, Mr. Craig Palasco. On the guitar, Brian Bejo Green. Robbie, Robbie, come on, Castillo on the guitar. And last but not least, our musical director, our pianist, a fearless leader, a little bit Keanu, a little bit Alan, Mr. Alan Chang on a piano. And now, I'd like to do something that's really special for me. My grandpa, when I was a kid, he used to play me, uh, which his favorite artist was Dean Martin, and it 
he was mine too, I gotta say, one of my faves. He sang effortlessly. And uh, so I took this song that he made famous and I tried to make it my own. And I hope you dig it. It's very, very pretty. It's called You Nobody Till Somebody Loves You. But don't believe the message. Because as sweet as this, the song is and the concept is, it's not true. Because we don't need anyone to complete us. We complete ourselves. But let's just revel in the sentiment anyway. It's weird, when I started off, uh, everyone said, oh, the Sinatra knockoff, oh. This would be a fun one hit wonder, one record wonder. They yeah, could have been right. But I wrote a song that I got lucky and wrote this song and uh, it got covered by uh, people like, there's a group called Westlife in the UK, I don't know if you know who they are, but they're, they're massive. And uh, they had a number one hit with it. And then this, this great dude named Blake Shelton, this beautiful country singer, had a number one hit with it. And uh, I just want to say to those people that have covered it, it's been covered like six times, thank you for the money. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, I'm really proud that I was part of this uh, tune um, because, you know, it, it turned out I wrote it, um, you know, I was in a shower, basically, but it turned out that uh, to me it was this kind of catchy song with a lyric I thought was uh, supportive of the melody, um, but it, it meant something to people and, and uh, it meant a lot, I think, to the, uh, to the families of soldiers that went, that went off and uh, fought for their countries. And, uh, I can't tell you how much that meant to me, that, um, that it actually helped people through tough times. And uh, really, that, uh, it changed the way I even I looked at music or the way that I looked at myself making it. The fact that I could touch people's lives like that was huge for me. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm thrilled to say that we get time to ask a few more questions from the glass box of Destiny. <laughs> okay, this is a long one, and this doesn't have a name on it, so I'm not gonna do it because I want to see. I want to. Was that yours? No. You're such a liar. Okay, this is from Karina and Natalie. Hey, you're really? That's you? You liar. <laughs> she was like, "That's me." If you could call, you read this because I can't. Oh, wait, you need a microphone, too. If you could collaborate with uh, one male or female singer, past or present, who would you choose? That's a good question. That's a very good question. Honestly, I think male, probably Robbie Williams. Um, I love Robbie Williams. What? What the hell? Do you guys know who Robbie Williams is? He's one of the greatest. He really is one of the great entertainers. He's a beautiful entertainer. And female... Um, Oh, God, that's a really good question. You know what? Oprah? No. <laughs> you know, I've actually had an opportunity to duet with the, the, the women that I love most, and Jan Arden is one of them. Um, I love her so much, so much. And Nelly Furtado is another one who I love. They're so cute. So, yeah, I, thank you for the question. I've done that. Jan was, uh, we, used to, we toured together, and um, so she would come out b before me, and she would tell the audience that uh, she'd say that I was uh, kind of stalking her, and she would, the people would say, Michael, Michael. And she'd say, this guy is not, she said, he's about this big. And she'd say, he comes to my dressing room, and I just pick him up and give him a kiss like that before the show. <laughs> so that's okay. That's that question. Okay. Let's go to the next question. Okay, this is from Kimoy Winter. Kimoy, that's a very pretty name. Okay. This is very, this is, no, it's good, though. It's very sweet and morbid. Again, the microphone. I feel like Phil freaking Donahue. <laughs> if, Go ahead. <laughs> if you could meet one person who has already died, who would it be? Elvis. <laughs> Without a doubt. That's a great question. Elvis was the coolest dude ever because all the girls wanted to do him and all the guys wanted to be like him. 
And I think it was because he was, um, I think he, yeah, he's hot, okay. But no, I think truly he was, uh, he had mastered, he was vulnerable, he had mastered self-deprecation. I think that he realized through it all that it was all silly and that them screaming and passing out was a lot of fun, but it wasn't real. And I think that that's what people were attracted to most. Anyway, thank you for the question so much. Thank you. All right, now, what I'd like to do now, thank you. You guys have made this an absolute blast for me. You at home, I want to thank you so much for uh, taking the time to come out and, and watch watch on TV like you did. And thank you guys for being so cool, really, for coming with me on this journey. I want to thank my beautiful band, Merry Men. Now, you at home, you people here, get up off your little booties with me. Come on, get up and let's dance this thing out, all right? Let's go, boys. Come on, don't be shy. You can dance every dance with the guy who gives you the eye. You can smile, every smile for the man who held your hand beneath the pale moonlight. But don't forget who's taking you home and in whose arms you're gonna be. Oh, so darling, save the last dance for me. Oh, I know that the music's fine like sparkling wine. Go and have your fun I Laugh and sing But while we're apart Don't give your heart Come on and tell anyone And don't forget Who's taking you home And in whose arms you're gonna be Everybody But so darling Baby don't you know I love you so Feel it when we touch I will never, never let you go I love you all so much You can bet I'll go and carry on Till the night is gone And it's time to go If he asks If you're all alone Can he walk you home You must tell him no. And don't forget Yeah. Uh -huh.